Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Star Drive 2 Sector Zero. The guide, tips and tricks and a small playthrough. I did this before but now I'm going to do it better. First of all about the races. When you pick a race, you're not picking the racial attributes because you can customize them as you like. What you cannot customize is the size of the ship. Each race have a different ship design and internal layout of the ships. For example, the Opteris have the biggest ships with interior space, the Polyp has the second biggest and the Wolfga have the smallest. So if you want to have ships that have a lot of firepower and have a lot of room to store things in, go for the Opteris. If you want a lot of cheap ships, go for the Wolfga. Furthermore, when you pick a race, you pick their racial attributes and their racial technologies. The attributes you can customize as you like. The technologies are fixed. And that could be unbeneficial because, for example, the polyp has a special have a special technology that will allow you to use photosynthesis to a greater effect. But if you don't have photosynthesis because you customized them, that technology will go for a waste. The Opteris on the other hand my favorite race, have no technology that is linked to any attribute. They get bonus fighters for each fighter bay, for example, and it does not matter if you have any racial attributes or not. Well, if you're not being building fighter bays, then you waste that technology, but in all other cases, go for it. As for the racial attributes, there is the following to know. You can take a maximum negative of 10 points which will allow you to take a maximum positive points of 20, 10 to start, and 10 that you can from taking negative attribute points. As for the negative points, I would recommend ship defense, because if you do it right, your ship will never have to get damaged and never take damage, so that they have less hit points is not that important. Timid warriors, because yes, they have lesser life points, but you can level that up with technology. So... Ground combat is for those who don't know how to bomb people. Clumsy spies, because while espionage is an interesting part of the game and a useful part of the game, it is not necessary. You can defend yourself even with clumsy spies and, well, you have to forget about tearing secrets out of other people or letting their ships explode, explode by weird accidents. It is nice to have, but it is not necessary. Repulsive, why? At the difficulty level I'm playing, and that is maximum, the other races will hate you anyway. Yes, with Irresistible you might be able to do one or two special trades without paying your soul for them, but you can live with Repulsive, trust me. So, one thing I want to make clear is the industry, the worker part. There are people who do this and then think that they can build everything in no time. You cannot do if you're not taking this. Why? Because each production point that you produce produces a certain number of pollution points. And the pollution is eating up the production. You will see that later on, I will show that. So if you take inspired workers and do nothing in the environment, environment control, you will not get a lot out of it. Furthermore, as for religion, sacrifice is extremely good if you are warfare race because when you conquer a planet and you don't like the inhabitants for example because they're uh, slow breeders or poor farmers or something like that you can dump them in the pit and you will get research for them and gold PC it's called here and your god will like you and will give you special things for it so that's quite nice to have um, it is morally a little bit shady but well who cares it bangs and that's important Holy Land and Spiritual have you with the um, moral of your people. The higher the moral, the better the work. What I recommend is Subterran, because they are planets that are very small, tiny even, and you can only put one person on it, or two. And these things will never get very beneficial to you or your empire. But if you've got Subterran, they double in size, basically. That means even the smallest planet can be a useful add-on to your empire. You can go on every planet, every planet will be able to you produce some usefulness with Subterran. Then there is Creative. The only way to get all the technologies in the game is to get Creative. Or you're taking Assimilators and the bonus technology of uh, Xeno Assimilation, but even then it's luck. 
and a lot of planning. With creative you get all the technologies in the game so I recommend that. All the eyes are nice to have but in my eyes not necessary. Just keep in mind environmental and industry is linked. So as well don't overdo things. If you get super farmers and you get photosynthesis then you will drown in food. Yes we'll make a lot of money of it but it will not help you that much. As for the new things you can do, Titan Quest, you can only build Titans. That means no free corvettes, no free frigates, you can just build Titans. Sounds nice, is not that good because you will need a hundred turns to build a single Titan. Total War, a good series, I would not recommend it here. And Newcomer, well you should not start as last of a race. Even if you're a fast runner, if you ask me. Well, without any further ado, let's jump into the game. When you start the game, your first look should go on your position. If you're on the edge of the map, as I am, excellent. If you're in the middle of the map, screw it, because they will come from all sides to beat you up. Second, look into your home system. Is there a planet that you can colonize? For example, this one here. It's radiated, so we cannot produce any food, but it's got ancient androids, so we'll get two free workers. We look at the neighboring system and we immediately notice that there is this orange things. These are special resources and they are unbelievably important because for example this one here, nano cage, will give us one extra production per nano cage. If you remember right there was a starting, starting attribute that will give you plus two production to each worker and that costs you six of your ten points or twenty points if you take the negatives as well. And this simple planet, Scully 2, with two nano cages, will give you exactly the same bonus just for colonizing that planet. It will give that across the empire. Every worker in your empire will produce two more hammers each turn because you've got two nano cages. And if you find two more, you will get a special bonus. 20% discount, 25% discount on construction rushes. And when we look here, we have a system with the Dorn. There's already a living someone, the Dorn themselves. Those guys are excellent fighters, but that is not what is important here. It's not the barren soul, which means they cannot farm good. It's not the fact that they're starving because they're on a desert planet that has barren soil and that is minus on minus and it does not give a plus. Uh, they have Bakhtar root, which will actually mean you get plus 0.2 population growth. Now, when you look at your whole planet, you have a population growth of 2.2. And that is because they're already living so many people here. Normally it's 0.4. So actually, this Bacta root is more or less doubling the reproduction of your colonists on the first planets. That is insanely good. Furthermore, we have nebulas. Here we have an iron storm. What does an ice stone do? First of all, it reduces the speed of incoming ships. So everyone who, want, everyone who wants to get through me on this side will have to pass through the storm and will be slowed down for 10 turns. So I can easily prepare for him coming. And someone who's got no shields will regret going through there anyway. On this side we have another one. It has the same effect. It slows the enemy down and it will disable enemy shields. Great, so if someone attacks who has shields, at least we're fighting on equal grounds because I've got no shields. As for the other planets, you should always keep in mind that a planet should be able to feed himself. So for example, radiated planets do not produce any food. Barren planets do not produce any food. Barren planets, as I tell you, make not any food and toxic planets make not any food as well. So basically what we have to do is first thing we do is we build ourselves fighter fleets. Fighter fleets can transport ground troops to planets where they're needed. They can produce a transport population if needed and most of all they can produce or transport food to planets where they're needed. So if we want to get this planet and we want so we're taking our colony ship and send it there right away it will be there in three turns. Then our freighter fleet should be ready. It will take nine turns, but we can buy the rest as soon as we're close enough. 
Because if we don't, the people there will simply starve because they cannot produce any food. Thanks to the radiated, negative perk of the planet, all buildings will cost 25% extra upkeep, but we can live with that. The next thing you do is you choose a research. What is there to know about research? Normally you have to pick one of these technologies. We are creative, so we're getting all of them. In my eyes, the best technology to start with is the rover bay. Because even on a freshly civilized planet, colonized planets, if you build that thing first, you can put the worker on food production for more reproduction and for independence from fighter fleets. And still the planet will produce, produce five hammers each turn. That's unbelievable. The next thing you go for is research lab, because five flat research. Some say go for the farm, but the farm costs two cold upkeep, that's a lot, and it produces three food on every planet, even if it's barren, toxicated, or so, so, something like that. The soil enrichment is good, but it only gives plus one food per farmer, so the farmer can, on radiated, barren, or other planets um, that do not produce any food, he can just keep himself alive. So that technology is, well, not that effective. The first real weapon technology you go for is fighter bay. Because fighter bays update themselves. Whenever you develop a technology that has this little uh, fighter icon on it, every fighter in your fleet, in all of your fleets, will be upgraded to the new weapons. When you develop new defensive mechanisms, armor or shields, um, when you develop fighter shields, they will all automatically be equipped with that. You don't have to put them back into the dock and refit them. They will automatically get that. That is the only weapon technology that upgrades itself, basically speaking. So that's very, very, very important. Each, time you sh each turn you should look into your uh, planets and in the following things. Food. You should not have a positive food surplus if you can. You will sometimes need that to feed the planets that produce no food, but basically this should be zero, because every food you produce that you don't need is a worker that can do something better. Yes, if you have a food surplus, it will be sold and it will create extra income. But it will not be as good for income as if you're building something else, trust me. Fighter fleets, at the moment we have a zero. Always look that you have some fight fighter fleets to spare because you will need to transport troops and you will have to transport um, food. And those fighters are not armed, they're pretty easily destroyed. And there are a lot of bad creatures, pirates, space monsters, black ships and I don't know what running around in the universe trying to kill your freighters. And whenever they touch them they will automatically destroy them. Keep that in mind. Now, for the ships, we see that the Dorn here have colonized this planet. The Dorn are one of the races that are not competing with you for supremacy of this galaxy. They're simply there to provide you with some extras. For example, the Dorn will provide you with special ground forces. The Dorn Desert Warriors, which are pretty, pretty good, but they will cost you 500 PC. We have 50 and we get plus one, so forget about that. And we want the Bakta route, so these guys have to fall. As I just mentioned, they're excellent ground combat fighters. So, attacking them with our ground combat fighters, who are shitty as hell, um, will make no sense. We can upgrade them, we can give them special technology. For example, I recommend you always give them a deployable shield. That is a wonderful technology. And one of them should always carry a knife to cut through the shields, because the shield will stand in your way if you're on outdoor missions and if you cannot destroy it and you boxed yourself in you can lose the battle because you cannot get rid of the shield. Always have someone with a knife because you cannot shoot that. What else is there to know? In the old times before the upgrade or before the DLC ground combat was um, a tactical combat in squares. Now only the mission are tactical combat in squares. The ground combat on planets is just um, determined by roles. They have their stats, you have their st your stats, and then it's rolled against each other. With the bonuses or minuses, and then you see who wins. We'll see that in a moment. So, as we cannot attack the Dorn in close combat with our troops, because we're inferior far to them, we have to fight them. 
we have only one ship. And when we look at the ship, it is an exploration ship. It has a cockpit, it has a sensor array, and it has tons and tons and tons and tons of fuel. And there is the first tip. This ship, for example, has 700, uh, 780 fuel units on it. Uh, the colony ship has 300 fuel units on it. So if, for example, we want to reach a planet that is out of the range of the colony ship, we can team it up with the exploration fragate, and the exploration fragate will share its fuel with the colony ship. So if you're, for example, building large warships and they do not have enough fuel to reach a certain target, just build a cheap frigate stuffed with fuel, put them together in one fleet, and the frigate will share its fuel with the other ships. Tip number one. You can build tankers, you could say. Now we don't need a tanker. We need someone who is able to bombard the dawn. So we go in the construction of the ships. Uh, these are the small ships you have. They are the corvettes. You can have a certain number of corvettes for free, which will not cost you any command points. Command points is the maximum of your fleet. If you extend that, you will have to pay BC for them. You should avoid that at any cost. You have the frigates and you have the cruisers. As you can see, these are pretty large. If you compare them to the Wolfgar, for example, you will see, oh my god, this ship so small as hell. Well, I will show you that for a moment. And now you get my drift. That is a corvette of the Wolfgar. There is not a lot of space in that. You cannot put any big weapons into that ship. You can only build, put very small weapons into that ship. And even those are very small. Their frigates are not very much, not a lot bigger. And their cruisers, oh my god, they're small. You cannot even build real fighter base into, well, in the middle perhaps. But you know what I mean. It's very hard to make these ships really, really dangerous compared to the ships of uh, the Opteris, for example. But back to the Opteris. When constructing a ship, you should keep the following things in mind. It does not matter how many engines you put in it. On the strategic map, it will always have the same speed. Adding engines to the ship will only increase its traveling speed on the battlefield, not on the general map. You will just need one engine to build the ship. If you get the little thing here, the ship is valid. If you had no engines, it is not valid. Second, you will need power to fuel or to operate the ship. The more weapons you install, it, especially energy weapons, the more power you will need. The blue sections can be filled with weapons. The yellow sections can be filled with engines. And the gray sections can be filled with systems. But there is to know the following systems can also be played, placed in any other area you want. See? So that is important because, for example, a fighter bay is a system. It's not a weapon. So you can build, for example, two fighter bays into a small frigate. Woohoo! Keep that in mind. If you're building a warship, for example, you can build artillery cannons in it. But if you build an artillery cannon, look at the firing arc. For example, building that will make a ship that can fire one cannon forward, one cannon to the left, and one cannon to the right. That means it will never be able to concentrate its fire on one target. That would be wasteful. Not good. Don't do this. An exception for weapons that have a fixed firing arc. No matter where you place them, rockets, for example, will always fire forward, no matter if they are placed in the forward section, left section, or right section. Why is that important? Well, compare this. I put rockets into this ship on both wings and in the front. Now, whoever is dumb enough to get in front of me will be killed instantly. I can even put some here leave one out because there must be engines there but you get my point this ship for example will be a deadly foe because it has an extremely high firing range 500 meters and it will do a lot of a, a hell of a lot of damage if you do this for example the small rockets you will see that you only have a range of 200 meters 
So if you're fighting someone who's using rockets or, God forbid, laser turrets or something like that, uh, 250, he will be dead long before he reaches firing range. And even if you go for the quad turrets, 250 maximum range. 250 maximum range. A lot of targets are using laser cannons. My tip is, except you're fighting um, black ships, go for rockets. Rockets are the killer in the beginning of the game. Most people don't have ECM. Most people only start firing at you with their laser cannons when you are in firing range of their laser cannons. They do not use their laser cannons or rarely use their laser cannons to destroy the incoming rockets. So, let's say you say, screw this, I want to go for, let's say, a Corvette, and I want to make it as powerful as it is. Then you can use the upgrades. For example, normally, this ship will not do a lot of damage. You have rockets to the left, you have rockets to the right, but you cannot fire forward, so you always fire only one your rocket launches to the enemy, right? No, because you go for arc extend, and then you have 180 degrees of firing range. That means both rocket launches will fire at everyone who's in front of you. Nice. Keep that in mind. Artillery. Artillery sounds good because of the range. It has even a higher range than the rockets. But the difference is, rockets will always hit their targets. Artillery will rarely hit their target. Artillery does more damage the closer you get to the target. Rockets will always do their full damage to the target. As for defenses, the more armor you put into the ship, the longer it will last depending the enemy is firing at the side of the armor. For example, if you're building a lot of armor in the front and you're turning your side to the enemy or you're fighting against fighters who get around you, attack you from behind, then they will simply destroy your ship from behind and the armor in front will not be of a lot of use. What we need now is a ship that is able to bombard. So we're putting as many nuclear devices into our ship as we possibly can. We can even put one into the engine section. <laughs> okay, now we need a small fuel cell and we need a small engine. Why do I put all this small? Because the more hammers the ship costs, the harder it will be to produce. Now you see it's not complete because it, I still not have used a lot of uh, space. I must use, I use up at least 75% space, so what I do is I put useless armor in, because armor only needs one hammer of production. And you see, for 107 hammers, we get a ship that carries 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 nuclear bombs. More than enough to take care of the Dorn. Dorn killer. So. Now you may say, Boris, is that a good idea? Build a ship primarily for one use? No, we don't build a ship primarily for one use, because we can simply order that ship by clicking here and here um, to refit. And then our little frigate will fly to the nearest planet that has a dock, which is this one, and it will a turn uh, appear in the building query here, and we can rebuild the ship, which is a lot of easier. For example, if we build a Dawn Killer, it will take 18 turns to build the Dawn Killer. Let's make one turn come through. And you will see that refitting the ship will only take four turns. So always refit your ship, by the way, they're getting experience. And the more experience you invest in the ship, the better. At the moment, we're researching with four, and we're building six hammers. We can put someone down here, but as you can see, the building time will increase drastically. But the other way around, it will only save us one turn, but it will take double the turns to build the Xeno mine. So you can play around with this a little. Sometimes it's better to put one worker down and sometimes it's more wiser to put one scientist up. You can use that as you like, but always keep in mind the efficiency. Okay. 
Freud to be was still taking a lot. Oops. Five turns. We could do that because if we do it any other way around. Um, the problem is that our colony ship will arrive at the nano cage next turn, and if there is no one to feed them, they will starve. So it might be wise to just for one turn um, Okay, let's do this also, I hate to do this. We confirm. So they will lose 0.8 because they have no food. Which is bad. You see the basic growth rate is 0.4. So we need those freighters up and running. But we'll need one more turn to make them work. So, now it is built, so we can put the people down into uh, our um, research. Every hammer they will produce now extra will go into our exploration frigate. So, now they're starving because we're not producing enough food. So we take one of our guys up here. And now we're producing enough food to make them work. We're not building anything useful here except for the um, trade goods, which will basically mean they produce money. But we do not need money. What we really need is a warship. They should not build the warship, but... They're messing up hammers here for the warship. And the more hammers they get up, the better if we later have to buy it because of an emergency. That brings me to the command points. The more command points you have, the more frigates you or corvettes you get for free. For example, we have seven command points, five starting and two for the starbase. The more starbases you have, the more command points you have. So if you want to have more command points, build starbases or build bigger starbases. You can only do that if you research them. The more command points you have, the more free corvettes you will get. That will not cost you any command points and therefore will not cost you any money if you exceed the command points. And you get some free frigates as well. So... This is Global Network. They will inform you about bad things happening around the universe. So... The exploration frigate is being ref refilled. And it's ready to go. Okay. They can start building... Actually, they can start building a colony ship. Not that it is of any use. But we can get this guy now, down here, for more research, to get the Xenomine faster. As you can see, it's five turns, so that's not that bad. Um, this guy can already start to the dawn. He will take three turns, and he will have to at least bombard them for two turns. So there is no need for us to start the um, guys here right now. We need one fighter for our food. We have one fighter to spare and each fighter can hold uh, I think four of the guys. Well, we can look. Sometimes it's four, sometimes it's five. I'm not entirely sure. Four. Okay, so we can put four of them into a freighter without uh, starving out our population. Because, of course, we can put the five uh, soldiers into two freighters, but then there will be no freighter supporting our planet here with food. So that would be a very, very bad idea. So, four of you, launch. What you should always keep in mind, you can upgrade and um, refit the guys. Shields are great. All these weapons primarily only come into use if you are doing missions, special missions. If you do normal ground, pan, ground combat on the DLC, it will be rolled by the dice. You will get no tactical screen, you will get no squares where you can move and command your troops. It will just be rolled dices with bonuses and negatives. Um, whenever you go for 
someone with a shield, you should keep a combat knife close. Why? Because the shield will stand there forever. And it is possible in the missions that you wore yourself in with shields and you cannot get out of your place anymore because with laser rifles you cannot destroy shields. You can only destroy them with combat knives. So keep that in mind. The shields are great, especially for people like us who have very low life points. Um, so we go for the shield, the shield, the shield. And more healing. Healing is always good. We have enough knives to cut ourselves free if we get stuff. And give me a call laser rifle. Excellent. The more technologies you research, the more techniques or items will appear here. Launch into space. So, they can go there as well. Actually, they can join together. So, you go for the door. We're producing one bonus food. That is because, uh, well, we need the food for the other planet. So that's that's totally, totally okay. Totally okay. They're building the minute ship. You are building uh, nothing at this point, which is a waste. But uh, on the other hand, that's okay. That's okay. We need the technology desperately. So everything, everything's all right. Let's go for it. One turn. Two turn. And we can already attack. Excellent. Of course we will not deploy our troops because these are little bucks and these are real killer Dornish warriors. So we bombard them. What is there to know about bombarding? Bombarding with nukes sounds great but has one major drawback. Every time you drop a nuke, you will get pollution. And that is the problem, or the point, because what if some of the planets you conquer by force by bombarding them back into the Stone Age will not produce something for a long time because every turn only one pollution gets cleared. And if you drop enough planet bombs on a planet, guess what will happen? The planet will be polluted for years, or turns better so to say. As you can see they have two uh, people living there. As soon as we start bombing, it will be reduced because this is the health bar of the citizens, so to say. So the more we bombard, the more citizens die. Never bombard this section here to zero because then the planet cannot be conquered by ground troops because there is nothing to conquer there. So we'll need one more turn of bombardment. Come on, bombard. Them. Still too many alive. This is all the life points, by the way. But these guys are terribly tough, trust me. So, attack. Bombard. We're okay. Okay, so the planet now has no ground forces there. That means we can attack and deploy. The ground combat will reserve or resolve next turn. Point. We have too much food here. We can put someone here for production. We can put him in research, but it will only give us one turn, and so it will at least produce some hammers, so that's okay. So, they're building the minute ship, that's okay. We can also put him here for more research, but as you can see, it does not do a lot. So that's okay with us. And we might use the minute ship sooner than we think or we hope. And this is the new combat screen. You see their bonus, their furious warriors, they have uh, ferocious warriors, and they even heal, and we have no bonuses. But we're outnumbering them, so we should. Whoa, he has one, and he does more damage than we four guys. So that takes one more turn to take them down. Fight! Hooray! He's out, the planet is ours, and they're starving again. Great. You go back home, and we'll have to put our little fella here back into food production, because otherwise our planets are starving. Now you see the pollution problem. This prom planet has been bombarded into the Stone Age, which means 
they will not produce anything. I can put him here, and it will not do any good because he will be giving us uh, seven worker output minus thirty-eight pollution. That is no good. We can put him here. He's bringing in some food, but <laughs> well, actually, it's minus. So that is better. He's research researching. Or maybe we can put one of our guys here down. No, 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 they're stalling. That's not good. Oh, wait a minute, I've got another idea. Sometimes this works. No, it does not. So it does not help to put the guy into production. He can research, that is as good as it gets. But that also means that we can put one of these guys here up and we get the same research and he's building the colony ship so it could be worse. So now we've got three planets and look at our population growth plus eight in total. So we're actually getting a bonus of 100% just from the Bakhtar Root special resource. What are you building? Well of course you're building Corbett's. You can never have enough Corbett's, trust me. Those things will become useful very, very soon. At the moment, we are not producing any hammers. We can just wait. As for the ground forces, ground forces are produced automatically by the infantry base. Every turn, every five turns, an infantry platoon is created. Later on, you can build, for example, Max to help you find. But that's that's a different. A different point of view. Some of them are even created automatically, but that's that's a different topic. So just for now, we're doing good. We order our ship back, our Opteris a warship, and we're going to build it into a real warship because there will be trouble very, very, very soon. So now we want to build a real warship. How do we do that? Well, the best warship to begin with is not with an artillery, because you will not get a lot of artillery. And as I mentioned, artillery is very, very inaccurate. I would remind you recommend you build the following. Looks nuts, but it is not. Then we need engines. One engine. This is a rocket turret, more or less. It does not need any um, more engines. <coughs> it should not maneuver around the battlefield. It should just do the job. So, we do not need more energy than that because we're not using energy weapons. If you're using energy weapons, you will need more energy because your weapons will stop firing when they have a shortage. And the power generator is like this, not producing a lot of energy. Only plus six. That means if all guns are firing, if you have laser cannons in the ship like hell, it will stop firing very, very short and and not very long. As you can see, we're empty in 9 seconds. That's bad. We should at least have 100 seconds of firing time. So let's put some of our ammunition storages in here. 59 seconds. That's still not enough. One more here and one more there. And now we're at 150 seconds. That's not a lot, but it shall do. In theory, our ship is ready to go. I would recommend you put some armor in front of it. Why? Because the main of the damage will come in front of you. And if you have got the armor in front, that will keep your ship alive for the first hits. Now this ship costs 148 hammers, so it will take a longer time to refit that ship, but that's okay. We call it the Rocketeer. That is a very hard-hitting ship, and it, if it used rightly, it can destroy ships of double its size. Oh, wait a minute, we can even, we can even perfect this. Wait a second, because we didn't use the specials. We could use Arc Extent, which is not necessary. Rapid Fire, which will actually double the firepower of the ship. Oh, well, increase it by 25%. And Overlord... Effective damage on the weapon. Oh yes, look at this. From 800 to 1000. Okay, let's equip all the ships with the new rockets. And we have an energy shortage. So we'll have to uh, build in more energy 
slots. How much energy does one of these little suckers give? Ten. One, two, and three. Sixty-one seconds, that's not a lot. Okay, maybe... How much ammunition do we get one of, out of one of this? Five hundred to a hundred. Okay, let's do the following. Seventy-one seconds, that's not enough. Okay, forget about the armor. We need firepower. Eighty-five seconds. Oh boy, God hates me. Is eighty-five seconds enough? Not really. But it will have to do. Confirm. It's more like a one-ship wonder, but it will kill big ships. If we come across any big ship, the miniature ship cannot handle. The small corvettes, uh, the frigate will take down. Good. So, I want you to go into refit for the Rocketeer. This refit will now take a lot, much longer time because, uh, as you can see, oh, 140 hammers. Oh, God. 28 turns. We'll better start now. And here we have the ultimate robot Very good. And the casino. Also very good. So, now you can say, Boris, you're building the... rebuilding the ship. If you do that ship away, it will be lost. No, it will not. You can always put something into the build query and push it up with the mouse. And that is one of the best things you can actually do. And now we come to the pollution point. You see, we have five hammers. If I put someone in here, we don't get ten hammers. We only get eight because two pollution. If I put one more here, you can see that the pollution is increasing. And the outcome is not as much as you might think. So, we have to choose a new research and we'll go for the research lump next. They will build the minute ship in one turn and after that I want you to build the rover bay. Uh, they're still so polluted that they're not producing anything anyhow. In theory, if you've got enough money, the rover bay is not very expensive. You can build this thing right out of nothing. Although I would not recommend that. So, food is okay. We have our first warship. Bring it back to the fleet, because you should always have, in the beginning, all your ships at one point. Because this ship alone, you will do nothing. It will only do anything if it is supported by other ships. Oh, we have a new worker here, and therefore too much food. Six turns. Well, this is just one turn here, but it will give us six turn less in the astromatics lab, so that is actually a good idea. Always keep that in mind. Always have a look on your food supply. And now they're talking to us about the other races. Robo base being built, that is excellent. Robo base built here, but we cannot afford to buy it at this point. Question is, you should at some times um, mass money up to help a planet develop something. The problem is the pollution here is so high that even if we build the automatic railway bay, it will do us no good. Because the five hammers will be immediately be swallowed by the pollution. This planet will only get effective uh, for a long time for scientists, not even food production because it has barren soil. That brings me to a point this red negative quirks of a planet can be researched, can be put away by um, special technologies or special events. For example, there are planets that have an EM field, negatively, increasing your upkeep. You can research that. There are planets that have bad uh, animals on it, that eat your population. You send soldiers to it and it will be erased. So you can do that to keep the situation under control. 
And look at this. We have a hero to buy. He's a warrior. He fights in ground combat. He's a labor leader, so 10% more production, 10% more research, and 10% more farming. The only problem is he'll cost us 200 gold and 2 gold each other after. We don't have the money now, but we can get it together if we buy nothing. He will wait for us. I think it's here. No, wait, F2. Here it is. Uh, Elitis. He will wait for 30 turns. In 30 turns, uh, we might have enough money to buy the guy. Yeah, he's not the greatest, but he will do. Good! Oh boy. Well, it's, it's just one turn for more research, so it's not actually helping that much. They're still building the rover bay, which is okay. Good, 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 good. Come on. Oh, something has changed. We've got one more guy here. We can put him here for more production. Oh, no, it's... Yeah, that's nice. Do that. Oh, food shortage. Okay. <laughs> Back you go there. Oh, I hope you grow. I need more people. Oh, look at this. We've received reports from several scouts. It's apparently they've become aware of our growing. So, there will be warships soon here. So we should really do what we can to get our ship ready and go. It'll take one turn to build the lab. After that... Hooray! So, we really need our warship running. The others will be there in no time. Next thing we go for is the fighter bay, because the fighter bay will allow us to build ships that do not outdate. Quick look here. Six turns, seven turns, nine turns. I think that will do. One research! Are you kidding me? What's wrong with you people? Okay, whatever. Oh, uh, we have starvation again. Great. We don't have enough transports. How can you starve? It's hard to believe. <coughs> oh, because they have grown. Great. If I put you both here, will that help? Yeah, at least they're not starving anymore. How many turns do we have left for the big guy? 18 turns. Yeah, we, we, we can do that. We can beat that. Yay! We've got the rover bay. And the next thing we need is the research lab. Build it, build it now. Seven hammers. Look at this catastrophe. Oh, boy. You know what? Just for the moment, I want you to build the trade goods. It's just one gold, it's really, really not funny. Really, really not a lot. Okay, we'll need our research thing here going. Whoa, that takes forever. But that actually halves it. Twenty nine turns, twenty one turns, eighteen turns. Now that's thanks to the pollution problem here. Ah, oh, screw it. Oh, I've got an idea. Just for the moment, you could build that. 
sounds not, but you will see. Oh, wait, where did I put him down? Still one hammer? Okay. Hooray! We've got enough money to buy the hero. And we will immediately order him to help here. Wonderful. And you see, now our food production is going sky high, so we can put more people to work. We can forget about the trade goods. And we can build these things now in 17 turns. Wonderful! And he even helps with the ground defense. Isn't that great? You can immediately stop building that. 33 turns. Oh boy. And they're not building anything because it will take forever for them to build anything. I wonder when the pirates will show up. Oh, they have grown, so they're starving. And nice, nice, nice. That means we have to address someone here to produce more food. Not ideal, but what shall we do? Whoever will come for us... Oh, they're just talking about the races. Whoever will come for us will come through us, hopefully, through the... Um, through the fox here. have enough uh, freighters. Okay, see, now they're producing hammers, so what we actually should do is put them here to get the automatic rover bay as fast as we can. But now, these guys here are starving. Heavily. So what can we do? We're producing more than enough food, but we cannot get it there. So what we should actually do is build a freighter fleet as fast as we can. Four turns. Three turns. Yes, every turn counts. Okay. You're starving. We could help that a little bit, I think. Now it's only minus 0.6. Come on. Yay! Enough again. Ooh, just in time. Oh, see, it, it is as five turns. So we can put two of them down. Always keep that in mind. Always keep an eye on that. Okay, you will go for production because now you can produce. They're not very good at production, are they? Uh, keep farming. It's better than nothing. And they're starving again. Okay, so you go up here. Still someone starving. What? We still have not enough freighters. Are you kidding me? I need to build even more freighters. Unbelievable. Ooh, a fleet of warships. Where are they? I don't see them, but they will be there in no time. And here they are. Two of them, actually. Basic command and with class shields and iron beams. But as you can see, their range sucks. They have rockets, but that's okay with us. I was hoping I can show you close uh, combat. And I want more freighters before I do anything else. Thank you, sir. The rover bay we cannot buy. The research lab is already under construction. 
find some way to fuck up the battle because that is what I was waiting for. That's the reason this series is so long because I want to show you the battle before I end the recording. Um, go for it. So we could do auto or we could go for fight. As you can see, they have more height and more um, life points than we have, and but we have more firepower. <laughs> So, this is our starbase. We should put our warship behind our starbase so that our starbase gets the first assault because the starbase has the most life points. The enemy, as you can see, is here. We begin, we can stop the battle at any time with our um, space bar. They will be in range any second. The enemy has already been hit, and as you can see, we launched our first salvo of rockets. Let's get close in. And you see, he didn't even survive the first number of rockets. The problem is now the fight is on. And that is where the problems begin, because getting rid of the little fighters is a hard thing. Well, not so hard because we got the star base. We got level ups, training, wonderful, and even a metal. 20% damage when you're fighting inside friendly, friendly territory. So just for you, for those of you who've asked how to win battles easily, rockets are the answer. Ooh, curious percent, we should send someone out to check out the base. Oh yes, we should. The base is somewhere here. The problem is, we don't have the range to get there. But we will, because we'll be building a fuel ship. And then we go there and rip their asses off and get all their stuff. But that's a story for another day. I thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, don't fear, just ask. See you then. Bye.